Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is week 50. We're getting very close to a year here. Um, four topics this week. The first one is the FA that picked eight different companies that's going to help them work on some remote ID stuff. We'll talk about that. Uh, I want to talk about the new DJI platform, another DJI platform. This one is a little bit more professional oriented. That's the Matrice 300 RTK. I want to talk about a two-stage parachute for UAS that was developed. And then lastly, I want to talk about some FAA news with a new program called the UAS CTI. So let's get to it. Okay, first thing this week, actually several of you from my uh, students and uh, from YouTube have mentioned this article to me that I, I read as well. And I wanted to give you a little bit more information about this. The FAA released a press release talking about eight companies that are going to be involved with some remote ID stuff. And, um, and I think the way the article was written was a little bit confusing, which got a lot of people talking and up in arms. And um, the companies, the FAA basically selected eight companies to help them work on some technology for remote ID. Uh, the companies are Airbus, Airmap, Amazon, Intel, OneSky, Skyward, T-Mobile, and uh, Google Wing. And um, the, uh, the companies are going to be advising the FAA in developing the technology requirement for remote ID once the remote ID information, once the remote ID standards are set by the FAA. So uh, I know a lot of these companies are on the hit list and we've talked about this with the FAA and PRM in the past, uh, except I would say one of them that was actually supportive in their comment in the NPRM, supportive in the sense that it was in line with I think what most UAS uh, operators out there uh, have commented and that was Wing, Google Wing actually was pretty much on the same page as everybody else. Um, note that these companies are not going to be providing information, at least not on paper here, uh, for the proposed changes to the regulation for remote ID. Once remote ID standards are going to be set in place, these companies are going to be um, providing information, providing guidance to the FA on how to make it happen. That's essentially the bottom line. So uh, I think uh, everybody's really hot on remote ID and, and, and so am I, quite frankly, this is a topic that I spent a lot of time studying when it came out and I, I did a lot of uh, publications on this when, when this came out. So uh, I think this is a step forward. Uh, these companies have the knowledge to uh, basically provide guidance to the FA on how to make the technology happen. So we'll see what comes out of it. I know these are big companies and these have a lot of power. Uh, supposedly with the FA, so we'll see what the next step is. There's still regulation final ruling that has to come out of this from the FA. So I'll keep you guys posted when there's more on that. The next thing is DJI came up with yet another drone. Now this one I'm not going to be testing. It's a little bit out of my realm and a little bit out of my expertise, quite frankly. But this is the Matrice 300 RTK. And they also came up with a new uh, a payload. Payload, for those of you that are not familiar, is going to be what, whatever you put into your drone. Your payload on your Mavic Air 2, that's the, the hot keyword at the moment, that's the lens that's on it. Uh, larger drones like the Matrice series are going to be carrying different types of payloads. Sometimes you can have different cameras on these uh, on these drones and uh, there's a new uh, um, there's a new payload called Zenmuse H20 series there's two of them that came out so this is geared a little bit more towards first responders if you see the videos that uh, DJI put out this has a 55 minute flight time of 15 kilometers which is about nine miles of transmission and then six sensors all around the drone and also up to three payloads this is actually a kind of interesting three payloads on there so you can plug three different things onto the drone. It's got a new heads up display, uh, a new interface, quite frankly, that is going to show you kind of uh, what happens with different sensors all around. It actually has a, a heading indicator for, for those that are pilots, uh, can give you your heading as you're flying the drone. So it gives you a better idea of which way the drone is actually oriented. Um, the, um, the Zenmuse in itself, the H20 is really interesting. It's an all-in-one, uh, four different cameras all in one. You have a 12 megapixel wide lens that you can see exactly what's going on for an entire scene. You have a 20 megapixel uh, sensor that you can actually have a 23 zoom, 23x zoom, uh, optical zoom, so you can zoom in onto a specific object. Uh, they have in their video, they, they show what happens with law enforcement, for example, that wants to target a vehicle and then kind of follow it and then zoom and get the information from it. 
There's a thermal camera in there, 640 by 512 thermal camera, and there's also a laser rage finder attached to that H20. So that's four different things in there uh, that you have available in one payload. Um, the software has a ton of functionality. I'm gonna let you watch the video from DJI. Uh, that includes dual operator mode, which I thought was interesting, where you can, if you have the waivers, you can basically pass down the UAS from one person to the next, from one operator to the next. And you can also use it for training purposes using two different operators. You can also use two operators because you can have one person flying and then one person doing the controls, uh, which is uh, something that I actually do with the Inspire 2 and having somebody uh, as the pilot and somebody as the sensor um, just operating on the same aircraft. Uh, they have hot swappable batteries. So uh, again, kind of a, a really cool solution if, you, if you're looking into this, if you're interested into this. If you're a law enforcement agency, I know a lot of you are in the course for, from law enforcement. Uh, this is, might be something that you want to look into. I don't have a price range. You have to contact someone for the price tag. I'm sure it's going to be steep, but um, something to look into. Okay, next thing is our two-stage parachute. This company called, and I don't know how to pronounce their name, uh, it's A-U-V-O-S, that's the, the five letters that make the name, uh, A-U-V-O-S, I don't know how you say it, but uh, they, they successfully tested a two-stage two parachute for UAS. Now, um, a two, you're probably familiar because if you've been following for a while, I've been talking about parachutes for drones. You have the pair zero system that basically deploys if there is some kind of a failure and then uh, kind of captures the drone and then brings it down. This is designed more for high speed uh, UAS. So we're talking about something that's going to be moving forward, more than likely uh, not a quadcopter, but more of a, either a VTOL or an aircraft type. And um, the parachute, the basically two different parachutes, the pilot parachute is going to be a small parachute that's going to deploy to basically slow down the UAS and kind of stabilize it. And then you have the main parachute that's going to come out to basically come out at a lower altitude to slow down the UAS before it hits the ground. This is designed for up to 280 miles an hour. Now, I know what you guys are saying, uh, no more than 100 miles an hour, right, in the US. Uh, with a waiver, you could potentially go faster than that. Also, remember other countries have different regulation. And also this is for UAS weighing up to 110 pounds. 55 pounds for part 107 doesn't mean you can't fly something bigger. So we're talking about much bigger drones, much faster drones as well here with the system. So I just thought that was pretty cool, something to mention. Last thing I want to talk about is the FAA that has announced a new program called the UAS CTI Initiative. Uh, CTI stands for Collegiate Training Initiative. Uh, CTI is, is something that the FAA has done in the past. There was a, an ATC CTI program uh, a while back. One of the schools I work for, we were uh, uh, an ATC CTI uh, approved school. Um, the reason I'm mentioning this because I think this is an interesting step forward for the FAA where they're going to try to create the CTI program to kind of uh, create a conglomerate of uh, UAS schools. Now, this doesn't involve Pilot Institute, unfortunately, because we're not considered a, a four-year or a collegiate uh, training program. But um, basically what happens is they want people to share some of the insights of the industry and kind of create standards, which, which is good. Standards are needed in this industry, uh, better standards than what we currently have. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes and what comes out of this. Hopefully the information will be av available to everyone. I'm always looking to create our courses based on standards, whether they're created by the FAA or created by other companies that create standards for UAS. So, with that being said, this is all I have. I want to do one more update. Uh, two weeks ago, last week, we talked about the Mavic Air 2. Uh, two weeks ago, I talked about TerraView. TerraView that has the, the Range Pro, which is this drone that flies for 70 minutes, made in the US, made with parts in the US, and that would actually comply with uh, a mandate if it goes through uh, from the um, from the government where government agencies cannot use any drones that have Chinese parts in it or Chinese in other countries, quite frankly, but mostly Chinese. Um, so I had mentioned that this drone has the ability to be completely uh, free of Chinese parts. And some of you had made comments and rightfully so. I was talking about the, the Zenmuse payload, which is what is on their website. I talked to a rep who was actually one of our students, was a really nice person. And, and we got on the phone and chatted for a while and uh, gave me more information. So the, the TerraView does come as a different model that is available, not with the A3 controller, but with the 
PixHawk controller, which is uh, a US made and also comes with different payload that are not made with Chinese parts. So this UAS would be able to comply basically with the mandate if it gets signed and put into law um, and then become a American provider providing uh, a US that flies without any Chinese or major Chinese components. Okay, so I just want to, uh, to provide this as an update. And the last thing, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about the fact that I was gonna go for a cool flight at night and to capture some pictures. So here's the final product right here of what I got. Uh, if you're part of our Facebook group, uh, you saw the picture there, I posted it as well. Um, this is the result of actually about 20 pictures put together. This is a hybrid um, and um, two pictures of the sky, two pictures of the tree using the drone actually as a light painting device. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I've done light painting before without drones, but uh, this is the, uh, the biggest alligator juniper tree in the world. And it happens to be really close to where I live. So this is in the middle of nowhere. And this has a really cool history somewhat. Um, the, um, we had 19 firefighters that are called the Hot Shots here in Prescott, uh, who unfortunately passed away uh, a couple of years ago, I think it was 2013, in June of 2013, in the fire, and all of them perished. And a couple of weeks before, they were able to actually save this tree, and uh, this becomes, we call it the big juniper around here. And uh, this tree uh, kind of stood in the middle of everything that was around it that had become a blaze. And, um, and, and when everything stopped, this tree was still standing right here in the middle. So it's become a, a big uh, memorial for the firefighters and for the hotshots. And uh, if you've seen the movie, The Granite Mountain Hotshots. So that's what this was about. I wanted to take this picture and, and here it is right here. And here's a little bit of the story. Uh, I want to share this story with you guys. So uh, this is all I have. I will see you guys next week for more information. And very soon, a much bigger uh, review of the uh, Mavic Air 2 as I'm getting more flight time with it. All right, have a great weekend.